stand for our national anthem. Please rise for the invocation. 
location. Let us be thankful for the bounty of blessings of life and health we've been given. Let us look back on the past with fond thoughts and thankfulness for the family and friends we have. Let us especially be thankful for our parents, whose caring and teaching have made us what and who we are today. Let us look toward the future with hope and enthusiasm. Graduation is a time to consider who we are and what we want to become. May we feel pride in all that we are, and may we find joy in all that we get to become. Let today be the beginning rather than an ending of the rest and of the best of our lives. Amen. Thank you, Ms. Hahn, for your presentation of the invocation. It is Emily Matera, president of the class of 
pleasure and I have this opportunity to introduce to you our salutatorian. She has made great contributions to our class in all areas, academics, sports, and school service. I have had the pleasure of working and being friends with her and have personally witnessed the hard work and dedication she has put forth. On behalf of the class of 1989, I would like to congratulate her on a job well done. Here is for the class of 1989 salutatorian, Christine Hahn. Thank you, Corey. Dr. Krause, members of the Board of Education, Mr. Bjerker, teachers, parents, family and friends, and to the class of 1989. To be honest with you, I really don't know how to start this. You know when you want something to be so perfect that you're almost too scared to begin it? When I first sat down to write this, I was faced with the seemingly impossible task of expressing the overwhelming emotions we're all going through today, such as hysterical joy at finally getting out of here, but also a sadness at leaving a place that's become so familiar and so comfortingly secure, and that's full of so many wonderful memories for you and me. A sadness at leaving our teachers, who have become almost second parents to us, and whose help and guidance we've become so to depend on. A sadness even at saying goodbye to the administration. I think many of us will miss the egress times of Mr. Bjerker, and his many speeches that no one could really understand without a thesaurus. to guidance counselors without whom none of us could have made it through high school. We'll miss the secretaries who were always there when we, once in a while, needed to sign in late. And the janitors who put up with us in our mess for all these years. And of course there's a sadness at leaving each other, which I won't get into or else I may not be able to finish the rest of this speech. Along with this mixed feeling of joy and sadness is one of a deep appreciation for our family and school, which through the years, we have to admit, we've taken for granted. I know I have, but it strikes me now more than ever how much we have to be thankful for with the recent turmoil in China. People a few years older than you and I are being persecuted and executed for basic liberties which we've always enjoyed. And I pray that these people who could have wound with any one of us in college next year will not have suffered and died for nothing. Something must be done when human rights are being so blatantly violated. But I'm not here to make a political statement. Let's appreciate the fact that we've been allowed to set up a chapter of Amnesty International and to criticize the use of styrofoam in the cafeterias through stop. To voice our opinions to the student government and through the Viking voice. Let's appreciate this and go to college or to work with a new vigor that's worthy of the diplomas we're about to receive. Then there's a bit ambivalence about the future. There's an excitement you can feel just about to bubble over, but also there's a fear that comes with anything new. The future. After today, we'll be branching out in all different directions toward our individual destinies. Even so, I'm sure you'll agree with me that we'll all want to live long, happy lives. To achieve this universal goal, I've put together a little formula from what we've been taught from the past incredibly fast four years. The first rule I brought from William Schumann, former president of the Juilliard School. The first rule to live a long, happy life is to live long. This sounds very simplistic, but if you think about it, this has been a recurring theme, if you know what I mean, throughout our high school years, at a time in our lives when we feel invincible and life seems the only thing possible. But it is actually becoming harder and harder for us to stay alive due to drugs and alcohol and AIDS. But we've been well prepared by South to avoid these pitfalls. Send, sending us strong messages against drugs and alcohol are sad and basa. And about the dangers of AIDS, we've been well informed by assemblies with Dr. Wade. The second rule for living a long, happy life is to take risks. We saw this very clearly with Hands Across Clarkstown this year. It had never been attempted before, and it could have potentially been a total flop. But a risk was taken, and Hands Across Clarkstown was a marvelous success. But in taking risks, 
You should follow your instincts and be able to be proud of whatever it is you've accomplished, which is the third and last rule. Do you remember way back when, when we were juniors, just children? Whenever it rained, half of us illegally parked in the senior lot. We'd have a guilty conscience gnawing at us all day and be worried whether or not we'd get one of those warning tickets under our windshield wipers, courtesy of Mr. Graham. Then after school, we'd run to our cars and most of the time trip and slide down the hill through the mud. I was always sure someone was punishing us. So take risks, but be able to say you're proud of what you've done and live long. Since I mentioned the topic of punishment, I'd just like to take a moment to honor our parents. Just kidding. Though I don't consider this my speech, but actually the voice of the whole class, I'd like to publicly thank my parents and family. Thank you, Dad, for that look in your eyes, which is constantly saying that you'll be proud of me, whatever I do. Thank you, Mom, for your undying caring and for reminding me to write this speech. Thank you, Susie. In a sentence, I couldn't have done any of this without you. Thank you, Tommy, for being my best friend and making me laugh when nothing else could. And thank you, Mary, for being the sweetest thing on the face of this earth. And speaking for the whole class, if I may quote John McEnroe, thank you for having us, moms and dads. In closing, I'd just like to share some advice with you that was given to me by my favorite conductor, Alistair Neal. After our last concert, I'll never forget the last thing he said in his goodbye speech. He said, whatever you do, whatever you go into, do it with love, passion, and integrity. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tom, for your salutatory address. Yes, I do promote the use of SAT words. Mr. Chalmers, class of 1989, Secretary, will introduce our next speaker. Good evening. Today I'm happy to have the opportunity and privilege of introducing a person who is not only our class valedictorian, but also is a very special person. I've had the pleasure of knowing her throughout high school and I'm happy to call her a friend. An extraordinary factor about her is that she has excelled in many diverse disciplines. Not only is she devoted to her academics, but also to her community. She is the fine representative of the class of 1989. In the fall, she will be continuing her education at Brown University, and I wish her the best of luck. I'd now like to introduce the valedictorian for the graduating class of 1989, Ms. Karen Hall. members 
that will continue long after we leave this field tonight. Our linguistic memories of Mr. Birker are both multitudinous and mirth provoking. <laughs> time updates, our outstanding six-day educational cycle, and the terrorist attack on the first floor of the There are special moments from pep rallies, homecoming dances, the ring dance, junior ball, and prom that will stay with us forever. And of course, who could ever forget Jello wrestling? A 25 to 14 victory over North in football this fall will also be etched in our memories, along with events like the Spanish Fiesta, Hands Across Clarkstown in the Pouring Rain, the French Soiree, and the Wizard of Oz. Most importantly, we will remember our friends and all the times, both happy and sad, that we spent together. Although we may be separated by many miles next year, we will never be parted in our hearts. We also have priceless memories of our successes and accomplishments, both individually and as a class. Academically, there are students among us who reached an admirable amount of success in particular subjects, and we have recipients of numerous prestigious scholarships and awards in our class. We all took several long and difficult regents exams without the aid of cancellations or answers printed on the front page of newspapers, I might add. Students in our class started new community service activities, composed and performed musical pieces, created beautiful works of art, and set athletic records. Each one of us managed to accumulate 70 participation points in gym, a feat which seemed quite impossible at times. Throughout all of these accomplishments, the class of 1989 has proven what it is capable of and has given a glimpse of the success that lies ahead. Graduation calls us to say goodbye to the comfort and familiarity of Clarkstown South and to face the challenges that the world and the future offer. For the past several weeks, we have all been deeply moved and shocked by the events taking place in China. The university students of Beijing were demonstrating in Tiananmen Square for democratic reforms until the massacre by the army, followed by the arrests, convictions, and executions of members of the movement. The incidents involving these demonstrators, who are not much older than we are, have some very important messages for the class of 1989 on its graduation day. The things which they were struggling for so desperately are the freedoms and opportunities which we take for granted. Remembering this, we must always treasure these privileges and use them wisely. Like the students in China, we are now old enough to affect society in a positive way and to work towards the things which we believe are right. We face many problems in our own country, that of the homeless, the destruction of the environment, drug abuse, AIDS, and racism, just to name a few. Clarkstown students have already demonstrated their concern for world issues and social problems through their involvement in organizations such as Save Our Planet and Amnesty International, and activities like Hands Across Clarkstown, which benefited babies with AIDS and drug addictions through Hale House. By committing ourselves to finding solutions, we know that we can make a difference. It is easy to talk about the problems that face society. Let us rather become involved in finding the solutions. We have exciting opportunities to look forward to as we begin to participate in society as adults. Some of us will be entering the workforce immediately after graduation and will be facing all of the challenges and responsibilities that come with holding a job. Others will be going to college, and we know the changes that this will cause in our lives. We will be able to go to classes when, or if we want to, 
and stay out as late as we want to. We won't have anyone to keep us from burying our floor in mountains of laundry, or from eating donuts and cold pizza for breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day. However, we understand that along with these new freedoms also comes a great deal of responsibility. So moms and dads, don't worry. We love you very much and will never forget your love, support, and encouragement. We hope that your pride and joy in seeing us in our caps and gowns before you today will only be the beginning as we move on to bigger and better things. Thank you. Thank you for everything. by the Clarkstown Central School District Board of Education. Yes, I am proud of their academic and vocational achievement, and not all can aspire to the lofty heights demonstrated by this class. But I am more proud and thankful for what this class has demonstrated in reaching out to others in community service. This is the legacy that all can aspire to, and I thank the class of 1989 for this gift to South High School. I am comforted knowing that the future of our community and our country will be in their hands. Mr. Griffin, as Vice President and representing the Board of Education of the Clarkstown Central School District, I present you with the South High School Class of 1989. opportunity to thank the faculty of the Clarkstown South for your outstanding contribution and your incredible giving of yourself to this district and to its students. You're an extraordinary group of human beings and on behalf of the Clarkstown Central School District and the Clarkstown community, I wish to recognize that fact. To the students of Clarkstown South graduating class, on behalf of the board and the community, I wish you the best of luck choices of God's blessings in your future. Now the magic words. On behalf of the Clarkstown Central School District, by the power vested in it, by the Board of Regents of the State of New York, we now grant you your diplomas. We would like to note Ms. Mascarelli, who will say a few words for the class. Having been our principal for the past three years, Mr. Bierker has ably guided us through most of our time at Clarkstown South. His love and devotion to this school and to all of us have helped to make this a special day in all our lives. Not only has Mr. Bjerger been our principal, he has been our teacher, who has extended and lengthened our vocabulary, a fire marshal, who has shortened our egress time, and a security guard, blocking our entrances and exits to create a better academic environment. Finally, he has been a friend who listens to problems and conflicts which we face every day. As our high school career comes to a close this evening, it is my privilege to introduce Mr. Gerald Bjerger. Thank you, Ms. Mascarelli, for your kind words. Thank you, Mr. Griffin, for your acceptance of this class on behalf of the Board of Education. I would ask that the graduates come forward when their name is called. Ms. Christine Hahn.
Ms. Emily Matira. Ms. Lisa Mascarelli. Lisa 
Thomas Holland. Christine Holton. Trisha Horan. Ellen Hornstein. Tara Hughes. And Crystal Hines. Christine Amidiago, and Christopher Tim Bonetti. Tanya Glowacki, Richard Nicolino, Edward Izzelowski, Jennifer Javis, Eric Jacobs, Scott Jacobs. Christine Danik. Patricia Jimenez. Adam Duffy. Emily Johansson. Gerard Julian. Stacy 
Casey Lerma. Adam Levin. Yeah. 
Shear. Stephanie Shear. Gabriel Shear. Tara Shear.
Thank you. 